is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. place that has a sense of history, and indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. From KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Good morning. We begin with a developing story that we have been following for you all morning long. That massive water main break that shut down the 610 East Loop in both directions. Those lanes have since reopened after that break flooded the highway yesterday. Several school districts and colleges are closed today, including HISD. Taking a live look at that area right now, you can see a much different scene from just 24 hours ago. Crews are now working to remove the damaged portion of the pipe that is expected to take all day. And we are told that work is not supposed to impact traffic except for around Clinton. We do have team coverage this midday of what you need to know, plus that boil water notice that is still in effect. Channel 2's Brittany Jeffers kicks off our coverage this midday. So Brittany, what can you tell us? As the timeline goes, we just received an update from Public Works. They say they hope to have this all complete by early next week. But today, the real focus is all happening right here. And I want you to take a look at this. They have been busy since uh, last night. Early this morning, specifically, we're told by Public Works, the focus has been excavating and removing the damaged pipe, which they say could take all day. They've been working all night. I've listened to them all night working. From his backyard, Marvin Noel has a front row seat to repairs on a massive eight foot water main break. Yesterday was a different story. He saw the water gushing. I, I was watching it up this high. You know, it, it was crazy. You know, I've never seen anything like it. And soon, so did the rest of Houston. The impact felt all around the city with the boil order and school and business closures. Oh, I mean, we'll see what we can do as mechanics. I mean, you can't wash your hands, can't do anything like that, so I guess we'll just have to see. Public Works says all the water has drained or been pumped out of the water main, and from Sky 2, you can see the work being done. A spokesperson says the focus today is on excavating and removing the damaged pipe, which they say could take all afternoon. The next phase will be installing the new pipe, which could go through the weekend. All of the repairs may not be complete, they say, until early next week. So again, you can see the work being done out here on the ground today. The goal, according to Public Works, is to have this all completed by early next week. But they say this is a fluid situation. It all depends on how the removal process, as well as the installation goes. Of course, we'll, we'll, we will keep you updated while we learn more of those timelines. Here on the east side, I'm Brittany Jeffers, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Brittany, thank you. Meanwhile, businesses and people living around the area are still dealing with the aftermath of the water main break. This map shows the areas that are under a boil water notice right now. Channel 2's Sophia Ojeda joining us live from Southwest Houston. And Sophia, restaurants certainly doing everything they can to keep their doors open. 
Christine, good morning. Yes, they are, and they are taking extra time to boil large amounts of water. This around his bakery here in Southwest Houston has been boiling water around the clock and will continue to do so until this notice is lifted. We've been boiling water just to be on the safe side. We haven't had any issues. Workers at this Aranda's Bakery on Beach Nut boil large 30 quart pots of water, then cart it into the baking area for all the baked goods. Many businesses, restaurants, bakery, and coffee shops have had to boil water all morning long. Janiqua Franklin and her two kids headed out to the HEB on McGregor in Third Ward. She planned to stock up on bottles of water for the week. I really don't use the faucet water anyway because I don't trust it, but. You know, yeah. folks walking at Arthur Story Park on the Beltway could not access the water fountains here. They were covered in black garbage bags and caution tape. The morning coffee run was no fun at Starbucks. They weren't serving hot coffee or tea to customers. The Kroger on West Park spent the morning stocking water onto shelves. And of all the grocery stores we checked, the HEB on McGregor had the most supply of water we've seen. Well, I do have some water stocked up, but I just want to make sure I have a, enough. You happy you don't have school today? Yep, and I'm, I'm a free man. Oh yeah, the littlest Houstonians are enjoying this boil water advisory. Okay, here's what you need to know. For this boil water notice, use bottled or boiled water for drinking, making ice, brushing teeth, cooking, and water for pets. The running water in your home is safe for washing dishes. As long as you rinse with boiling water, you can still do laundry and bathe or shower. And make sure you boil for at least two minutes because that will kill the bacteria. The advisory could also lasts up to 48 hours or longer, depending on the circumstances. And lastly, if you've already drank the water, the health department says the risk is low, but still possible, especially for those who have compromised immune systems. So if you are experiencing any kind of symptoms like nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, call your doctor immediately. Reporting live in Southwest Houston, Sophia Ojeda, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, thank you, Sophia. That kid was hilarious. Christine. Yeah, leave it up to the kids to find the silver line. Right. I know, you got to. Well, because of that water main break, the Houston Zoo is going to be closed today. The zoo plans to open at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Also, the Harris County Criminal and Civil Court of Law Ad Law is closed today as well. All cases will be reset to new court dates, so you will need to contact the court for more information about your specific case. Our coverage of this water main break extends to our website, clicktohouston.com. You can find updates on the repairs and find answers to all of your questions about the boil water notice. Those stories are right there on our homepage. All right, well, turning now to weather, it's a pretty nice day out there, and it's Friday. I know. Happy Friday. Justin, are you a free man? You know what? Like I was just going to say... We're all going to do that dance later this afternoon. Free man. You see him? Hilarious. He's dancing. Free man. I'm going to make a meme out of <laughs> that know, kid. I know. Was, was that was awesome. A great way to put it to you, Christine. They always find the, the silver lining of things. Yeah. That's why kids are awesome. All right. Captain Science Relief Camera looking into downtown. Looks pretty good. A little hazy out there, but for the most part, we've already surpassed the temperatures from yesterday, jumping into the low 60s at right about the 11 o'clock hour here. So I think right about 70 degrees, 68, 70, pretty much going to hit it on the nose today. One of the reasons why I've got a pretty steady west wind that's allowing things things to warm up as well. You get some of that warmer air coming in from the southwest part of Texas air, a little bit of drier air as well, and all the cold stuff is starting to move away from us. Speaking of cold, coming up here in the full weather forecast, I'm going to show you some lake effect snow that will blow your mind. <laughs> It'll just let you know it is still winter in some spots. Won't feel like it today, though. We'll top out right around 70 for this afternoon, and then as you expect, we get in towards this evening. We're going to cool it off very quickly, so if you're headed out to cook off tonight, it's going to be perfect out there, but still a little cool. See those temperatures back into the upper 50s as we get to about 8, 9 o'clock. We'll talk about the rest of that cook-off forecast for your weekend and, of course, the 10-day. All coming up in just a bit. All right. Thank you, Justin. Well, a deadly three-vehicle crash involving a Waller ISD school bus in northwest Harris County is now under investigation. The district says that crash happened on FM 2920 at Hunters Creek Way when a septic truck tried to pass that bus and then collided with a Toyota Camry. Sky 2 flew over that scene earlier this morning just after 9 o'clock. The sheriff's office says the driver of that Camry did not survive. 
Turning to the latest on the impacts of the coronavirus crisis, this is a live look at the big board this midday. Stocks have dropped again more than a thousand points. This could be the worst week since October 2008 as investors fear a global economic downfall amid the coronavirus, according to the Associated Press. They say the risk is still low, but health officials around the U.S. are taking steps now to try to contain the virus. The government wants to be ready for anything, so hospitals are taking the travel histories for anybody who comes comes in and appears to be sick. NBC's Tom Costello explains. Health officials here in the U.S. moving fast to prepare for what the CDC has called an inevitable spread. We are right now in a very active containment mode. Thousands of Americans nationwide already under voluntary self-quarantine after returning from China, even though they don't pose any immediate risk. The U.S. has faced outbreaks before. From SARS in 2003 to the H1N1 virus in 2009, both outbreaks providing the government a roadmap as it navigates the days and months ahead. At Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago, Dr. Benjamin Singer says they're on alert for coronavirus, even as the ER and ICU are filled with patients recovering from the seasonal flu. How do you distinguish between coronavirus and the typical flu? The symptoms overlap quite a bit. That's why we pay a lot of attention to their history, where they've traveled and the people with whom they've been in contact. Meanwhile, as health screenings continue at select U.S. airports, the CDC is distributing new test kits to public health labs nationwide as early as next week, ensuring there are enough supplies on hand. President Trump says he'll do whatever is necessary, even if that means following China's lead and quarantining in entire cities. You know, you always have to be prepared. Prepared to take every precaution while facing a new and unfamiliar disease. If you are sick or if somebody in your family is sick, then wear a mask so that you're not making others sick. If you're trying to keep from getting sick in a public place, this may not be as effective, really, as simply washing your hands regularly, don't touch your face, and try to stay out of public places where a lot of people are sick. I'm Tom Costello in Chicago. Back to you. While we are proud to be Texans every day today, many are putting their best cowboy boot forward for Go Texan Day. It is the unofficial kickoff of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Frostbanks across the Houston area celebrating this morning with what they call a chuck wagon breakfast. Several people stopped by that bank on North Shepherd in North Houston to get a free plate of food. Here's what was on the menu. So we've got biscuits and gravy, sausage, bacon, eggs, and cowboy coffee and peach cobbler. Nice. Yum. Well, if you don't have lunch plans just yet, the bank is also hosting a chuck wagon lunch. They're going to cook up veggie stew and brisket sliders with sides, cobbler, tea, and coffee. Sign me up, right? Sounds good, I man. Know, sounds great. All right, a store employee manages to get her hand actually stuck in a safe. Coming up, how long it took firefighters to rescue her. Plus, a new discovery in space, what astronomers found orbiting around the Earth. A child was hospitalized Thursday in New York after being mauled by a dog on Manhattan's Upper West Side. Authorities say that little girl will probably need extensive cosmetic surgery. Allie Bowman reports. The little girl's pink scooter is all that's left behind after she was mauled by a pit bull here Thursday afternoon. So the child was bit by a pit bull, okay? That's a bit of it's going to be a dog bite to the face, all right? Thomas Nardini was passing by 79th Street on Broadway just before 4 p.m. when police say a mother handed her seven-year-old daughter a $1 bill to give to a homeless woman who was sitting on the sidewalk with her dog. There's a lady that often is there with her pit bull, and every time I walk by with the dogs, the dog growls. When the child placed the dollar down, police say the dog jumped up. The pit bull grabs her by the face and pulls her away. The woman doesn't have control of the dog. The little girl is flopping around. I mean, it was awful. Nardini says the dog dragged the little girl by her face before bystanders were able to pry the dog off. By the time I got there, they were managing to separate them. The woman, everybody by this point is jumping in, trying to, you know, shrieking and carrying on. It is the, the worst, the worst of the worst. Yeah, when police arrived, witnesses say they didn't even wait to call an ambulance and instead officers covered the child's wounds and rushed her to a hospital themselves. The worst horrific thing has happened here.
That was Ellie Bauman reporting. A convenience store employee managed to get her hand stuck in a very precarious position in Tennessee. The clerk was depositing money into a cash dispensing safe when her fingers got stuck in the tumbler mechanism. After talking to the safe maker, firefighters took apart the safe and helped free the woman. This took about three hours. She was taken to the hospital to be checked out. Other than some bruising, there weren't any serious injuries. Some passengers on the iconic Jungle Cruise at Disney World experienced quite the ride. It had to be shut down for several hours after one of the boats took on more than a foot of water. A Disney spokesperson said that all of the passengers were able to get off that boat safely. A new discovery is making some astronomers scratch their heads today. That's because a mini moon was found orbiting the Earth. University of Arizona astronomers found it earlier this month. They say it's an asteroid about the size of a car. It's possible that this mini moon has been orbiting Earth for a couple of years and in a couple of months from now it could leave Earth's orbit. Probably the second, maybe the third asteroid known to have orbited the Earth. We had potentially a mini moon for the past years besides the moon that we all know. This is only the second asteroid known to orbit the Earth. The first was discovered in 2006 by the Catalina Sky Survey. That's pretty neat. How about that? It well, you know what, listen, mind, I'm going to be honest. It needs to go on, get on out of here because we're going to have to redo all the textbooks and everything if we can. <laughs> exactly. I know, I know, and nobody got time for that. <laughs> good, thing, yeah. good thing they're now all on iPads. Most are on I iPads. Know, right? yeah. True, yeah, good point. I know, but still, we got cook-off to do. We That's got right. sunshine to enjoy. We got time for two yeah. nights as well. Yeah, it, beautiful sunshine out there today. Yeah. I haven't been out since what, whatever time, so it's nice. nice. It is nice. Yes. Yeah, yes. No yeah. Yeah. I'm like, we have no idea. It's been, you what know, day is this? Yeah. But if you go to cook-off, it should be perfect out there tonight, ladies. I think we're going to be looking at real nice forecasts, not just tonight, but the next couple of nights as well. So if you haven't been down there, certainly uh, you owe it to yourself. Go on down and enjoy it. It should be nice night out there. 61 downtown right now. We've got 60 degrees in southwest. And look at that beautiful east beach shot as you get out towards Galveston. They are at 61 degrees as well. A little breezy. Winds starting to pick up here about 10, 15 miles an hour. Speaking of, let's head on down to the island. You can see the uh, wind starting to really pick up along a good chunk of the sand there. 15 mile an hour winds. Humidity, not much to speak of. About 50%, we're looking good. 61 degrees and sunny skies, so it's going to look good out there for the rest of the day today. And in fact, I'm going to keep that low 60s. It'll turn into upper 60s as we get in towards this afternoon. So as we said, it's a little breezy. Most of the wind generally coming in from the west. Now, what's interesting is you get just to the north of us, and notice it's more of a north, almost northwest wind, and that's kind of the tail end of a jet stream that's bringing in a little disturbance to the east. All that cold air that's been bottled up the last couple of days has been pushing off to the east. So as we take our temperatures and we'll roll them up this afternoon, likely hit right at about 70 degrees, upper 60s to about 70. And then notice as we get in towards this evening, if you're going down to NRG, I would bring the jacket for sure because it's the air is dry. And so that 58 to 59 won't feel like it is when it's super muggy around here. It's going to feel a little colder than what the actual air temperature is. And then by tomorrow morning, if you're headed out for the parade, looks good by nine o'clock, everybody getting set will be in the mid 50s and then jumping up into the 70s for tomorrow afternoon. So a good forecast overall that continues as we head into the rest of the weekend. High pressure sliding off to the east just a bit and there's the jet stream just kind of oriented there. You can see from Chicago moving in through the Ohio Valley and look at the snow just outside of Atlanta. Not only there, but I'm going to show you something at 1130. This right here, this is just a train of lake effect snow that's slowly shifting northward. Places up there near Watertown and you see there Buffalo, they've picked up two feet of snow and they could be getting another foot after that. Blizzard warnings are widespread across uh, the upstate country there as you get near the lake. So weekend for us looks great. Lots of sunshine. Here comes the next system. This is going to bring in some showers and thunderstorms. Could even bring some stronger ones up near Dallas in the Arkla text, but that'll zip through pretty quickly on Tuesday once it's done. We'll see the clouds eventually clear, give way to a good looking forecast as we head into uh, the rest of next week's forecast as well. So as we said, cook off this weekend looks great. It's one of the best we've seen in quite a while. I was down there yesterday and it was just nice. nice. Everybody was like, thank you for the nice weather. So get out and enjoy it. Uh, otherwise, we've got a little hiccup on Tuesday and then we're back to uh, 50s and 70s. So this is kind of that early yeah. spring where 
get out and enjoy it because you know what's lurking in a couple of months. You think the winter is done? You think our cold snaps for the most part are done? Somebody asked me that earlier today as well, and I said, yeah, we may get one or two mm -hmm. small ones, maybe a quick 36 hours, but it's getting late. I think All right, about that. so enjoy the jackets. If there's something you haven't right. worn yet, get it done now because then Got it's it. going to be hot before we know it. Oh, yeah. All right. Before we know it, the humidity's back. Yeah, just thank you. All right, Walmart taking on rival Amazon Prime. The plan it's working on now and how it could be easier for customers to order online. A new startup company wants you to start drinking wine from a can, the plan it has to expand here in the U.S. In today's consumer news, Walmart is working to take on Amazon Prime. The retailer has worked over the past 18 months exploring paid memberships that could include perks. As soon as next month, Walmart is planning to start publicly testing Walmart Plus. Walmart is considering an option that lets customers use text messages to place their orders. So far, it has not released how much that membership will cost. Well, have you ever thought about wine in a can? That's what a South African startup company is hoping will catch on right here in the U.S. So it just debuted its new assortment under the, the brand name Uncanny. The wines are packed in 8.4 ounce cans. Uncanny sells varieties of premium red and white wines advertised as vegan friendly. One of the owners says the initial response to the product has been overwhelming and some customers already seem to really love the idea. I think if you, um, if you serve the wine out of a glass bottle um, and you pour it into a glass, it will, definitely, it will definitely taste different than if you serve it and you maybe drink it out of the can, absolutely. The owners of Uncanny hope to cash in on a global trend where millennial wine lovers are moving away from bottled wine. The can sells for about $2.60 each. The holidays may be the last thing on your mind right now, but toy makers are announcing some very highly anticipated products coming out later this year. Yeah, some of them are already selling out through 2021. Liz McLaughlin has the latest toy trends. A tiny creature is taking over the toy aisle. After the child from Disney's Mandalorian series stole the hearts of Star Wars fans everywhere. Baby Yoda, hands down, is probably going to be the biggest thing for 2020. Now all sorts of Baby Yoda merchandise is launching, including an animatronic toy from Hasbro. With pre-orders already sold out through the holidays. Any toy company that has a Baby Yoda product is probably going to sell out of it. Also selling out, a new Tesla Cybertruck from Hot Wheels. Part of many toy announcements at the recent toy fair in New York. Your total is $7.10. Including Alexa connected play from KidCraft. Coding Critters won a Toy of the Year award. One example of a wider trend using physical toys to teach STEM concepts. So you're learning the basics of coding, but without ever looking at a screen or introducing an iPad. But toys without screens can still be high tech, including new robots such as the MIP Arcade with Gesture Sense technology. Now toys are really interacting with kids in a way that is responding to their um, actions. Toys poised to top kids' wish lists for the holidays if parents can get their hands on them. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. I was like, how do I get my hands on one of those? I ones? know, I was looking <laughs> at it. the list already. All right, make or break. That's what some Democratic candidates for president are facing in South Carolina. Coming up, the crucial vote happening tomorrow that could set the tone for Super Tuesday. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. To sit in timeout or not to sit in timeout, it's not just what your child is pondering. Researchers wanted to know if it was worth it, too. What they've decided, coming up. Mattress by H-E-B. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Welcome to Channel 2 News at Midday. Here's a look at some of the morning's other big stories. Right now, crews are excavating and removing the damaged pipe that was at the center of yesterday's flooding on East Loop and Clinton Drive. That work is expected to last all day long. Publix Works says all of that water has been drained or pumped out of that water main. A spokesperson says that they are hoping to have the repairs completed by sometime early next week. The boil water notice is still in effect for parts of Houston. This this map shows the affected areas. People are being asked to boil or use bottled water to cook, drink, or make ice. Many businesses, restaurants, bakery, and coffee shops have had to boil water all morning long as a result of this. The advisory could last up to 48 hours. And strong gusty winds toppled the bus from Croatia in southwestern Germany earlier today. You can see it here on its side. We're told at least eight people were injured. 
Heavy winds and snowfall has caused several accidents in that area. A Europa League soccer match had to be postponed yesterday because of this approaching storm. But weather forecasters predict that this wintry weather could be over fairly soon with temperatures rising once again over the weekend. Turning now to Decision 2020, early voting ends today. The polls will be open until 7 o'clock tonight. The next time you'll be able to vote in the Texas primary will be on Super Tuesday when more than a third of all the delegates will be up for grabs. You can find the polling locations near you on clicktohouston.com. Turning now to the campaign trail, South Carolina is holding the last presidential primary before Super Tuesday. The vote will likely be a major deciding factor in the future of some candidates' campaigns. John Lawrence reports. South Carolina, the state Joe Biden calls his firewall, but in reality, it's his fourth quarter and he needs a Hail Mary. Are you going to win? Yes. <laughs> All right. Because South Carolina is the trajectory to winning the Democratic nomination. South Carolina looks favorable for Biden. He got an endorsement from Representative James Clyburn this week. And in a new Monmouth University poll, Biden is ahead of national frontrunner Senator Bernie Sanders. One of the serious things we got to do is make sure that we defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country, Donald Trump. South Carolina is basically do or die for some Democratic presidential hopefuls, like Senator Elizabeth Warren. Are you in this fight with me? Let's do this. Senator Amy Klobuchar. And I'm asking you to vote for me. Thank you so much, everyone. Businessman Tom Steyer. You know, I just don't believe that having the government take over big parts of the economy is a smart thing to do. And former mayor Pete Buttigieg. Not all of the answers have to come from Washington, but more of the funding should. Another former mayor, Mike Bloomberg, isn't on the ballot in South Carolina, focusing instead on later contests. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Harry and Meghan will lose their Canadian security when they step back from their royal duties next month. Police have been helping the pair security arrangements over the past few months while they spend time in the country. But once they start that new chapter of their lives on March 31st, those arrangements are going, arrangements are going to end. Today is Go Texan Day, the unofficial kickoff celebrated on the Friday before the rodeo begins. Houstonians are encouraged to sport their best cowboy gear like their jeans, their cowboy hats, and of course, those boots. And if you think you're the best Texan around, you can enter the Go Texan contest. You can find all details to that on our website, clicktohouston.com. Meanwhile, the Rodeo Houston Trail Riders are making their way into Memorial Park this morning. It's all for the big parade downtown tomorrow at 10 a.m. featuring thousands of the trail riders, floats, and a whole lot more. The parade starts near City Hall at Bagby and Walker and ends at Lamar. And it looks like it's shaping up to be a beautiful weekend for all things rodeo. Definitely, and I'm sure they're going to be excited to get to Memorial Park oh, and see that guy right there. Look oh at my him. gosh. Here, huh? Howdy, that? partner. Isn't he? He's a free man for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he most certainly is. This is this is little Will. We'll call him Deputy Will. This is Will, this is Will Brand. Oh, uh, Craig I love Brand. Him. Yeah, Craig, Craig, one of our Judy. media managers uh, over in the newsroom there sent that to me. So he's, he's the cutest little dude. I've met him before too. He's, he's the best. So anyway, uh, he's ready for Go Texan Day. Are you, though, is the question. If you're headed out to rodeo tonight, it's going to be a nice one. We'll see the temperatures falling quickly back into the low 60s. 60s and upper 50s. So as we mentioned earlier, bring the jacket because it will still be a little chilly out there tonight. Uh, but I tell you, I was out there yesterday. It was perfect weather. It's going to be even better as we get into the weekend. Live look outside from here at Channel 2. Not bad. Nice to see the sun back as well, isn't it? 61 in Hobby. Galveston also checking in at 61. A little breezy on the island. About 15, 200 mile an hour winds. Right now, they're all generally coming in out of the west. We've got uh, temperatures anywhere from around 60 to 64 degrees as you get out towards Katy. And it should warm up nicely up to the upper 60s to about 70 degrees. Yes, if you look at that and you say, hey, is that snow over in Tennessee? Correcto, it is. In fact, this is a little clipper system sliding its way through the jet stream off to the east of us, and it's kind of pulling with that area of high pressure. Still close enough, though, that notice there's just no clouds across the state of Texas. That's why we're going to see another real nice day today. In fact, I'm going to keep us sunny through the rest of the afternoon, and as we go in towards this evening, things fall off, but we've got ourselves a picture-perfect weekend. We'll talk more about that warm-up, and of course, get your rodeo cook-off plans all set as well in just a bit, guys. All right, Justin, thank you.
Remember all that privately owned African art stashed inside of a Harris County maintenance shed on the taxpayer's dime? Well, Channel 2 investigator Mario Diaz broke that story a few weeks ago. He did. The man who has control over that shed, Harris County Commissioner Rodney Ellis, is not providing many answers and questions. Well, they are not stopping. Channel 2 investigates has learned that the district attorney's office is now probing, probing the private collection after concerns of potential criminality were raised. After Channel 2 investigates went inside a county maintenance shed to look at African art. Who has the keys to all of this? Others started looking. Days later, Commissioner Rodney Ellis's shed transformed into a pop-up art expo, meaning a whole lot of people were popping up, coming and going. The public not invited. Now we know these guys are looking. And so are these guys. Channel 2 Investigates has learned the district attorney's office has been made aware of the findings by county attorneys concerned over potential criminal activity. County officials tell us they have had at least two in-person meetings with the DA's office. Sir, I know you're walking away. We just want to try to get some answers, sir. Commissioner Ellis won't tell us who owns the art, how it ended up in this shed, and how much county taxpayers are spending to keep it there. The buck stops with you, sir. What do you have to say to Harris County taxpayers about this? Thank you. The county attorney's office isn't having any more luck. We are having difficulty getting answers. Melissa Spinks is helping spearhead the investigation. How much transparency are you getting from the people involved with this art? We are getting um, some help, but we're not getting all the answers we need. Answers like, who is Sam Nujinuri? Here he is in February 2018, pictured with Commissioner Ellis. We know Nujinuri signed an agreement with Ellis to display 14 pieces of African art in county offices. But Nujinuri's company, African Art Global, was non-existent when we first started asking questions. He's since filed new paperwork to bring his company up to date with the state. Spink says her team has already identified hundreds of thousands in taxpayers' dollars spent to modify the shed to store the art. Currently, we anticipate that the invoices total over $250,000. Channel 2 Investigates obtained separate invoices showing $16,000 spent to move art to the shed, as well as to prepare it for fumigation. Taxpayers stuck with both bills. And still, a huge question. Who actually owns all this valuable artwork. There is no paperwork. That's right. No paperwork to back up who owns all this. Not to mention what started as an agreement to display 14 pieces somehow ballooned to an inventory of 882 pieces in 2018. Now that number has grown even bigger. There are over 1,200 pieces. Come again? Over 1,200 pieces of art. 1,200 pieces, no paperwork showing who owns it. One person interested in all of this is Darlene Jarrett. Sam needs to go to jail. Jarrett is a grandmother of 12. Court records show the company Sam Nugineri used to operate owes her nearly $280,000. It was shocking to me that he was doing business with the county with what I knew about him. Following our first report, Jarrett and attorney Joe Walker set the county and Commissioner Ellis a notice of claim and a preservation demand for the artwork. They want to make sure they are paid and that artwork doesn't move. They are not the only ones determined. So is Spinks and her team. No matter how difficult the task, we're going to keep going with the investigation because the citizens of Harris County deserve to know. So what is the district attorney saying? Not much. The DA's office says that out of fairness, they do not confirm or deny the existence of investigations, but we keep digging and finding new angles. Take a look at the image Channel 2 Investigates obtained Thursday. It shows a family inside that maintenance shed with Commissioner Ellis and a child lying on a piece of art. Remember, Commissioner Ellis and his team have said this private collection is supposed to be public art on display across the county. But right now, it is off limits, only accessible to Commissioner Ellis and the people he chooses. Now, tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll explain what else we have learned about this image and what is happening inside that shed outside of public view. Mario Diaz, Channel 2 Investigates.
A remake of the 1992 horror movie coming to the big screen. Yeah, still to come when you can see a new take on Candyman. For everything that he's gone through and overcome and everything like that, I could not be more proud to call him my son. A 10-year-old gets the chance of a lifetime. How his superhero dreams became a reality. But first, we want to give you a live look at what's happening on Wall Street this hour. Actor and comedian Tracy Morgan is thanking the nurse who helped care for him after he was injured in a car crash six years ago. He presented the Tracy Morgan Award for Excellence in Rehabilitation Nursing to Gina Domingo. Domingo worked with him during his difficult recovery period. The Royals back in the UK this week wrapping up their final duties. One job for Harry was he got to meet with rock icon John Bon Jovi and record a song with him. Bon Jovi says he really wasn't sure how to refer to Harry anymore. But but once they sing their song, he says he's going to call Harry the artist formerly known as Prince, which is a joke back to the singer Prince himself. There we go. A new but familiar face will be taking one of the judges' chairs on America's Got Talent this summer. Sofia Vergara will join the show for the very first time. This comes as her Modern Family gig wraps up its run on, an, on NBC this spring. Sofia Vergara will be the first Latin judge on the show. She joins returning judges Simon Cowell and Howie Mandel. This is also marking Heidi Klum's return to the show as well. Now to a feel-good story that looks like it was straight out of an action-packed flick. That is right. A 10-year-old superhero thwarted a bank robber, put out a fire, and even rescued someone from a collapsing building. And this all happened in Florida. Gage Pike was diagnosed with neoplasmas after he was born. This is abnormal tissue growth that often signals cancer. So he told Make-A-Wish Foundation that he wanted to be a robot superhero and thus... Robo Gage was born. He's doing a superhero pose and waving to the crowd. And in that moment of being a superhero, um, you can't, there's that money can't buy any of that. Have him being able to save people and put out fires and everything, it's like the best day of his entire life. I'm sure it was. Make a Wish Central and Northern Florida teamed up with the Orange County Sheriff's Office to have Robo Gage save the day, and that he did. Some of NBC's biggest shows are coming back for more seasons. Dick Wolf just signed a massive deal with Universal Television. Part of the agreement includes three more seasons for the producer's Chicago dramas. That would take Chicago Fire through season 11, Chicago PD through season 10, and Chicago Med through season 8. A new vision for Universal Pictures as the remake of The Mummy fell short of the expectations. Yeah, it was supposed to be a part of a series of movies dubbed The Dark Universe, but that idea is now out of the picture. The first film to come from the revamped vision arrives this weekend. As Raphael Seth explains. He said that wherever I went, he would find me. True love never fades in The Invisible Man. Elizabeth Moss stars in this modern twist on the horror classic. Her husband is a brilliant but abusive scientist dictating her every move. She manages to leave their house but can't escape the relationship even after the control freak is found dead. So when sinister things start happening as Moss recovers with friends, the survivor discovers that what she can't see can hurt her. The Invisible Man is rated R. It's classic types of avoidance. Go away. Steve Coogan gives deep discounts on deadly sins in greed. He plays a bespoke billionaire amassing his fortune through off-the-rack fashion, but his tailor-made empire falls to bargain basement prices when he's called out for exploitative business practices, and he figures the best way to stitch up his tattered reputation is to throw a lavish party in the Mediterranean. Greed is rated R. Remember the voice in your head? The one that said... Away. Explore the world with faith and trust, but no pixie dust in Wendy. This Peter Pan facsimile flies a path of magical realism toward Neverland. Beasts of the Southern Wild director Ben Zeitlin follows a ragtag crew of kids on a mystical journey, but time and age don't follow the rules on their fantasy island, making the lost boys and girls choose whether to stay there and stay young or return home to their families. Wendy is rated PG-13. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, NBC News. You should say his name. I dare you. Candyman. 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 Go. Go. 
You don't want to say it. A new take on the 1992 horror film Candyman. You see it here. Producer Jordan Peele and director Nia DaCosta are calling it a spiritual sequel. Just in time for the summer of blockbuster movies, you can catch this film in theaters on June 12th. And that movie traumatized me oh, when was I was a awesome. kid. It was so good. scared me so much. My hands are clamoring right now. It <laughs> like was. Just from that, just from that clip. Just yeah, the bees well, around yeah. him and oh. I mean, Jordan Peele puts together some wow. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. Get movies, out, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't seen the original Candyman, Netflix that thing, and it will scare the It people. will. <laughs> it's Ooh. really good. You know what Can't else is planning. scary? I'm going to show you guys something. Now, we were talking about down here in Texas, obviously, winter for us is what, like a hot cup of coffee in 36 sure. hours, and then we're out of it at this point. And we've got a real nice looking forecast. Ooh. Take a look at that video. Where is that? Where that do I not want to go? Watertown, New York right now. Wow. Oh, off of Lake Ontario, that is, uh, as of about an hour ago, that's what downtown Watertown looks yeah, like. Yeah, I was going to say, is that West Michigan where I grew up? Because that's what it looked like They're a lot. They're hammered, too, yeah. uh, with all this lake effect snow. So I'm going to show you a little something here, what's happening. So we've got this big area of low pressure that's just north of North Bay, which is basically over here in eastern Canada. And so you've got all this cold air moving across the lakes. Now, generally the lakes, or at least a good chunk of the lakes, are frozen this time of year, but it's been a very mild winter. And so all of these lakes almost are completely empty of ice, meaning that all of that cold air can pick up the slightly warmer water turn it over into snow and then deposit it and especially as you get towards Watertown which is the video you just saw right there look at that band that's about three inches of snow per hour as best I could see for their estimating and it's just moving northward like this and these are these lake effect bands as Christine can tell you when they set up your neighbors 15 miles away might not get anything and you may get a foot and that's how that goes so we've got another little disturbance rolling through the jet stream high pressure is keeping us nice high and dry here across much of the area in fact 61 degrees as we look in towards uh, downtown Town or around the middle camera it looks like it's down just for a bit. Otherwise, 65 in Katy, 60 in Sugarland and Pearland, 61 down on the island, and 65 as you get up towards Cleveland. So winds are breezy out there today, all out of the west, and that's actually because we're kind of on the tail end of the back half of this jet stream, and so we're getting a little bit of an elevated wind. The pressure lines, those invisible lines in the atmosphere, squeezing together just a bit, and that generally will get the wind zipping through. So they'll re relax as we get in towards this evening. I'm not too worried about that. Speaking of, if you're headed on out for tonight, notice we'll be in the upper 60s, and then backing off into the upper 50s for rodeo. It's going to be perfect for cook-off tonight. Clear skies. Check for Venus, too. It'll be just to the south and right of the moon. And then as we get into tomorrow morning for the rodeo parade, a little cool to start. So jackets and sweatshirts, you won't need them in the afternoon as we'll keep the temperatures back into the 70s. So springtime weekend for us, that high starts to meander off to the east as it does. Here comes the next storm system. This one's going to dump a lot of snow across the Rockies. Much more uh, late season snow, we'll call it that. And then notice as it gets into Texas, fires up some showers and thunderstorms. I think a quick moving cold front could bring a chance for us. But for the most part, the real heavy percentage for precipitation and any kind of major storms are going to be up near Dallas and the Arklatex over towards southern portions of Arkansas. So cook off looks pretty good for today and tomorrow. We'll keep those temperatures on the warm side. And in fact, not only just that, we're going to keep it through the rest of the weekend. So if you get other plans, of course, the Dynamo kicking off their season Saturday night. Sabercats on the pitch as well. They'll be uh, there on Sunday and then uh, next Tuesday. Problem is rodeo begins that first day. And of course, that's a lot of folks who are going to be out doing uh, primary voting as well yeah. for Tuesday. Super Tuesday. Right. So just kind of keep uh, check on the forecast as we go through the weekend. I'll keep you all set. All right, Justin, we appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. All right. If your child has a tantrum, do they get a timeout? The answer to the debate over whether timeouts actually work, that's coming up. First treatment. We are following some breaking news right now. A big mission to seize more than 100 animals from a home in Katy. Moments ago, Sky 2 flew over that home on Satterhorn Trail right near Rosner Road as crews with the Houston Humane Society chased after animals to catch them. The organization says 150 animals are involved, including turtles, rats, and even birds. Time out or no time out? It's a question parents often contemplate. Now, a recent study looks at whether taking a time out has any negative long term effects on kids. Health reporter Haley Hernandez explains. If a child is acting out or having a tantrum, they need guidance to help them regulate their emotions since small children don't yet have the skills to do so. But that is where the debate comes in. Most parents say timeouts teach better behavior, while select groups say they're harmful. Now the results are in. 
A recent pediatric study looks at data from more than 1,000 children ages 0 to 3, pre-K, and 5th grade. This study was looking at timeouts over several years um, from birth to around 10 years old or 5th grade. And what it found is there were no long-term effects um, for kids that were put in timeout versus those kids that weren't. And they looked at emotional and behavioral functioning. Meaning results show timeouts are okay. But Dr. Mudd cautions that not all kids are the same. And just because a timeout works for one child, it doesn't mean it will work for another. She says one trick to make it productive is keep timeouts short. A good rule of thumb is to do one minute per year of age. Um, so really starting, you know, not much younger than one, um, 18 months would really be the, the youngest age we would recommend. Um, and then so a two-year-old would get two minutes of timeout. And really at that age, it's really just teaching them how to regulate their bodies. Results for long-term association between use of timeouts and symptoms of depression, anxiety, aggression, or self-control show there is no link. But Dr. Mudd reminds parents that children receive a lot of negative feedback throughout the day, whether it's don't do this or stop doing that. So make sure you're also taking time to praise them when they're behaving appropriately. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez, KPRC Channel 2 News.